Hi everyone, my name is Monique. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today we're going to be showing you how to play a game that is currently on GameFound called Thorgal the Board Game. This game is published by Portal Games, who are helping sponsor this video. And in this game, players are going to be taking on the roles of different characters from the Thorgal comics, which came out back in the 70s. Uh, this is a narrative-based cooperative game, but it's not a campaign style. Mm -hmm. There's going to be seven independent kind of stories that you can go on and adventure through. That's right. This is a storybook, a strategy game that has a narrative component. So there is storytelling to it, but a lot of it is strategic. And so today we're going to be giving you a general overview of how the game is played, just so you have an idea as to what to expect. Mm -hmm. But we do need to mention that this is considered a prototype copy of the game. In fact, we don't have a completed copy of the narrative storybook, mm -hmm. so things are subject to change in the future. Mm -hmm. Now, if this game is interesting to you, there is a link to the campaign down in the description below, which you can check out at your leisure. Lastly, if you like these kind of videos and you want to see more in the future, please consider subscribing. And with that, we are ready to begin. So if we please direct your attention to the center of the table, we're all set up here for a two-player game of Thorgal, the board game. Welcome to the world of Thorgal. Scenario one. <laughs> That's right. Just to kind of give you the lay of the land, each player has their own character. And so today I have Arisia. Yeah, and I have Yolan. In the middle here, we have the storybook that contains all of the maps that we're going to be using to complete our adventure. Mm -hmm. Now, like we were mentioning earlier, we don't have the completed version of the storybook. And so we're just going to be giving you a brief overview of how this specific scenario works. Sure. Which, by the way, is called Torkin's Temple. That's right. Now, before we continue, we do want to mention that the game is going to come with seven different scenarios. Mm -hmm. And they're all uh, isolated adventures, meaning they don't come together in a long campaign. Mm -hmm. You play each of them as their own separate game that has their own uh, story, which is also not a choose-your-own-adventure game. This mm -hmm. is going to be more of a strategic game where players need to work together in order to take the actions needed to win the scenario. Mm -hmm. Each scenario has its own card that depicts the different uh, win conditions as well as the lose conditions and any special circumstances that are specific to this uh, scenario. Mm -hmm. And so for our scenario, in order to win, it says we just have to complete any of these following two goals. We can either perform an uprising, mm -hmm. which will require us to do what it says here, which is basically assigning a certain number of resources to this location. Or you blow up the temple, right. which requires us to move this track along um, the adventure track. And actually, this adventure track is home to our lose condition. Mm -hmm. So basically, if we're able to move this, uh, this token all the way to the left, then we win the scenario. But if it gets all the way to the right, then the temple is built and we lose this scenario. So before you actually embark on these different scenarios, there's a bit of a text that comes in a separate booklet that did not come with our prototype. So that is something to look forward to in the final copy, but that will detail the entire story as to why you're going on this adventure in the first place. In addition to that scenario, there's also other ways to lose. If any player dies, mm -hmm. then it's immediate loss. Or if you run out of rounds, meaning nine in this particular scenario, then it's another loss. That's right. Now let's take a brief look at the layout of the map. The map is home to several different areas. And so these areas are actually separated by these lines. We have green dashed lines as well as these black solid lines. And so at the start of this specific scenario, the instructions are for each player to place their miniature in any area that has a one on it. So each area is labeled with a specific number and that's going to determine where you're allowed to move throughout the game. Mm -hmm. In addition, each area is home to a certain number of these locations. And so whenever a character is in a specific area, you have access to all of the locations in your area. Now, of course, over the course of the game, we are going to be going into combat with enemies. And so enemies in this game are represented by these colored chits. The colors are important because not only do they uh, determine sort of the strength of the enemy, mm -hmm. but they are also corresponding to the enemy's deck when we actually have to go and fight them. Now, one aspect that is specific to this gameplay is its use of polyomino tiles. Over the course of the game, we're going to be using polyomino tiles in different ways, including when taking wounds and when determining if a character dies. Now, the way that the game works is each round is split up into two phases. We have the action phase as well as the event phase. And in this specific scenario, we have maximum nine rounds. Mm -hmm. 
So then starting with the actions phase, each round, players are going to have a total number of four actions, mm -hmm. regardless of the player count. Yep. So in a two-player game, players will take turns taking actions going one by one until mm -hmm. all four have been used. That's right. And these are the tokens used to denote uh, the actions that you're taking. And so, for example, if it were my turn, I would take one of these action tokens and place it underneath one of the available action cards in the action row. Mm -hmm. Now, these action cards are all uh, color-coded, but they also have symbols at the top left-hand corner that denote what type of action they are. At the end of the round, after all actions have been used and the events phase has been resolved, these action tokens actually stay where they are because in the next round, you're going to be required to move each token to a different action location. Mm -hmm. So now that we know what our win and lose condition are for the scenario, let's talk about the different types of actions you can take to try to achieve your win condition. Starting with the move action, which mm -hmm. is this blue card here. Sure. The move action allows you to move to a different area of the board. The number that's associated with the icon at the top left-hand corner tells you how many times you're able to move. So in general, one movement point allows you to cross the green dashed lines into a different region as long as you're allowed to go to that region. Mm -hmm. So like we were mentioning earlier in the video, the number of the area dictates when you're allowed to be in that area. You cannot go to an area that has a number higher than the current round. Right. So going into this area would be fine. Now in our specific scenario, we also have these thick uh, black lines and these are considered impassable borders. So you may not under any circumstance pass these borders mm -hmm. and others scenarios may have other sorts of lines that have different rules and all of those you just refer to the rule book for. In addition, we unfortunately have an additional effect up here which requires us to gain a wound. And uh, we'll talk about the significance of these later on. Lastly, each of these cards has a bonus section in the middle here that may or may not alter the main action. Sure. The icon to the left tells you when the bonus is applied. And so specifically for this one that has the number one on it, this bonus is only applied if there is exactly one action ship below the card, so which now. there is right now. Yeah. And so what it does is it allows me to take the craft action with a plus one uh, indicator. Mm -hmm. And crafting we'll discuss later, but that is generally how the move action works. Now moving is going to be very integral to uh, getting to the specific locations that you'll need to reach your win condition. Our next type of action is this green card over here, and this is the journey action. So journeying has to do with these terrain cards. We have one already face up at the start of the game. And what this action allows us to do is basically place polyomino tiles on this card in order to gain certain rewards Words, but also have to face certain consequences. So each player has their own individual journey track, and depending on which player is going to be taking this action, you're going to be able to select polyomino tiles depending on what's depicted, where your cube is kind of indicating, mm -hmm. and you're going to place them out onto this journey tile or journey card right here. And so in general, when placing out these tiles, the goal is to continuously move uh, your journey track from left to right, because mm -hmm. you're going on a journey, progressing sure. through these terrain cards, right? Yep. Each tile that you add has to be connected uh, to the furthest right rightmost tile so that it's constantly going uh, to the right and never to the left. And so if I were to place uh, these tiles right here, I would also gain any of the benefits of the spots that I've covered up. And so in this case, I would take a wood because that is the specific good that's there. Mm -hmm. I would also have to deal with the uh, consequences of whatever the yellow spaces are. Right. And so each card is going to have a key at the bottom of it that tells you what happens when you cover up a red spot and what happens when you cover up a yellow spot. And for our specific terrain card here, when you cover up yellow spots, you gain wounds. So it's not great. Not good for you. <laughs> One important concept to consider is any time you cover up a space that looks like that, that is referring to the good that the area you're in produces. Mm -hmm. And so each number uh, in the different areas shows you a specific good that it produces right underneath it. So if I were to produce where I am right now, I would gain, I believe that's a stone. Stone. <laughs> this good. That good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you're able to place tiles so that it touches the column that has this symbol at the very top, then you actually place out a new terrain card. So this is how the terrain cards continue to expand. And once you place a new one, you always immediately gain the benefit that's shown at the upper right-hand corner of the card. Pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Now going back to this action card, this bonus symbol that you'll see here that you actually can find on a majority of the action cards right now gives you a bonus depending on how many action tokens are on actions to the left of it. So this is not going to help us right now because it's a card that's on the leftmost side. Right. But if we could put it into effect, it would gain us one good uh, that's matching an icon that you covered. Mm -hmm. 
Now moving on to the next action, this is the collect action, and it has uh, a lot of similarities with the journey action. Sure. Because when this one, you are still placing uh, tokens on the terrain card, but the exception is you're only going to be covering up one square. Mm -hmm. But basically, you get to place this one square token on an uncovered good space or one of these spaces. And it'll allow you to take a number of goods equal to whatever that number is there. Mm -hmm. And this is a really good way to get multiple goods in just one action. That's right. Because when taking this action, you're only ever allowed to place out one of these tokens. Mm -hmm. But had we taken this action before taking this one right. then we would be able to gain two of those goods right because it would give us an extra uh, bonus good mm -hmm. and so that is kind of why it's important for players to work together to strategically place these action tiles because right. there's a specific order to it that'll give you the most bang for your buck mm -hmm. all right moving on to the next action we have crafting we've discussed this a little bit earlier but what crafting allows you to do is it allows you to take an item from the five item display up here. Mm -hmm. Each player starts the game with one item that has to do with their uh, their character. And these are basically one-offs. Yep. You can you use them when the time is right, and then you discard them. And so on the item cards themselves, they will actually show you uh, the symbol that matches an action that you're going to be using the item card in association with. Mm -hmm. So when taking the craft action, you can take a number of items equal to whatever the number is on the action. Unfortunately for us, just taking the action right off the bat will not allow us to take any items. No. So this is an action that you're going to want to take a little bit later because of its bonus. So if it were to look like this, when I go to take this action, I can now take two items from the display. Mm -hmm. Now moving on to our final two actions, we have the assign actions. So you'll see this, this downwards brown arrow uh, kind of scattered on the different locations around the board. Mm -hmm. So you'll see them in these specific areas here because they have to do with uh, requiring you to place a number of goods on those spaces in order to gain the benefit below them. Sure. And these benefits are typically going to be the narrative aspect of the game. They pertain to uh, specific entries that you're going to find in the narrative book that we don't have available, mm -hmm. as well as uh, new types of actions that you can use to upgrade the actions in your action line. So assigning goods to these locations and fulfilling their requirements is a good way for you to gain stronger as a team. Mm -hmm. When assigning goods, you can assign them to any of the locations that are in your area, but they all must go to the same location. And they cannot be assigned to a location that has an enemy token on it, sure. which means locations such as this one right here, as well as uh, here, these are not available for you to actually assign to until you defeat that enemy. Mm -hmm. And also, as a reminder, one of our win conditions is to assign more of the blue uh, goods resources to the rebel space here. Then there are enemies on all of the B ruins locations combined. And so in order for us to make that win condition, we need to take this action yeah. to assign those goods to this location. Yeah, there's a total of eight enemies in all the B locations. Mm -hmm. So we need to assign a lot of that blue resource to this location. Or we need to defeat more enemies. And so that is our last type of action mm -hmm. going into combat. Taking this action allows you to choose an enemy token that is in your area. So if I were here, I could only choose this one sure. right here. And then I would draw a card from their corresponding deck. So we have that card here already because this is from the green deck. Mm -hmm. The enemies are uh, leveled. And so it goes green, yellow, orange with a red being the strongest. And I believe there is a purple mystical, <laughs> really, really strong um, enemy. Enemies can get upgraded and downgraded. But in general, the way that combat works is is you're going to look at your combat dial, which starts on one. Not very strong. Not very strong, no. but it does tell you what type of dice uh, you are allowed to roll when going into combat. And so like Naveen was mentioning, this, these are not a secret. No. You know what all the die faces are ahead of time, so mm -hmm. you'll know what your chances are. Sure. And after you roll the dice, it'll show you a certain combination of polyomino tiles to take from the supply, and those tiles you get to assign to the enemy card. Mm -hmm. Now your goal when assigning those tiles to this card is to uh, cover up the broken heart spaces because if you're able to completely cover them um, with just those tiles that you're given then you win and you defeat the enemy the enemy token gets removed from the board this looks unsuccessful <laughs> i mean who knows right and the reason why naveen is saying that, <laughs> that this is unsuccessful is because our role only gave us a two and a one square yeah. which is definitely not going to cover both hearts it's just not good enough you have to be able to place the polyomino tiles so that they are touching <laughs> mm -hmm. And I just don't think that that combination is going to get us there 
to cover both hearts. No way. If you were able to cover uh, one of these hearts, by the way, you heal a wound. And that is just one example of other benefits that you can get from the card. Mm -hmm. Similar to the terrain cards, they also have effects for uh, covering up the red and yellow squares. Yeah. So this would not have been the most ideal thing. You might have wanted to just dump that right over there so right. you don't have to take yourself a little wound. Yes, some strategic uh, insight there. Yeah. And so like Naveen is mentioning, this is not a winning combination. If it were to look like this, we would actually take a wound for each a visible heart that we were not able to cover. Mm -hmm. But that is in general how combat works. Since we're on the topic of wounds, uh, we promised that we would get to this later. Sure. These are wounds. You can only have five of them. And so each time you have to take a wound, you actually have to take a polyomino tile of size equal to how many of these you currently have. Yeah. So if I were to take another one of these, then I would have to take a size two mm -hmm. polyomino tile and place it on my player board. Now, these tiles have to be touching. That is pretty much um, the main rule when it comes to placing these in your space. But if at any time I cannot fit the polyomino tile on my board, then we automatically lose the game. That's how you die. Because my character dies. Yeah. So it's, uh, it, it's a bit tough when, when having to think of it this way. Mm -hmm. And that's about it in terms of the basic actions as well as the action phase. Mm -hmm. Now, we just want to reemphasize and reiterate that these are not the only actions that you're going to be seeing throughout the course of the game. Sure, yeah. You will also be able to upgrade these actions and make them stronger. Right. And so you'll be able to do a lot more with the gameplay than what we were able to demonstrate here. Mm -hmm. And then each round, we're going to be resolving one event card from either of these two decks, depending on if we've met the criteria. And so in this specific scenario, it says if there are at least three of these uh, specific uh, symbols combined that are uncovered on terrain cards, then you draw a card from this deck. Otherwise, if this is not true, you would draw from this deck. Mm -hmm. These two decks are similar in different ways, but I believe they have their own characteristics that will only be apparent through multiple plays. Sure. Event cards look like this. They'll have an immediate uh, action, which says you have to place a lock on the action card with the most action chips that Ooh. will make that unavailable. And then they also, at the bottom, have something that comes into effect during the next event phase. Sure. So in the next round, when we go into the event phase, we're going to start by resolving the bottom and then drawing a new event mm -hmm. card. And so that is essentially how the event phase works. Right. And that is actually essentially it in terms of the general overview as to uh, how this scenario is going to be played out. We basically continue playing like this until uh, either win condition has been met or until we unfortunately lose the game. Right. And that's essentially it. Now, like we were mentioning, this is not a comprehensive rules teach. There are other things to explore, including character asymmetric abilities, as well as seven completely different scenarios that are all uh, isolated and complete for you to explore. Mm -hmm. Now, this game is currently on GameFound, so if this is interesting to you, there is a link in the description down below. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to leave them in the comments, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. And thank you all so much for watching the video. We hope it was helpful. If you'd like to see more like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.